We're going to be coming out of um, 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, man. And we just been going deep into a series, man, that the Most High gave me, y'all. And we started in Joel, man. Joel chapter 3, verse 17 through 18. If anybody remember, it been keeping up. And we've been going deep, man. Just talking about let the priest, you know, and, and going deep about the priest because it was a, a, a strange thing that God would call for the priest in a New Testament time. <laughs> In a New Testament time, you know, he would bring the office of the priest back. We even got into a scripture talking about the teaching priest. What's up, Mr. Franklin? Mr. Franklin, a blessing, man. You know, and just going deep about that, y'all. And uh, we've been touching different points, man. You know, it's too many to name, but I wanted to bring it back up because we're going to be going back into the book of Joel. And we're going to be dealing with his people. Being an inheritance, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, so we're going to dive back in, man, and, and also go deep into this, this, this new age revival that's going to happen, y'all. That all the theologians done, done spoke about, you know what I'm saying? That, that all the commentators agree with God bringing forth a last revival that the world ain't never seen. That the world ain't never seen, and it's going to start with his people. It's going to start in Joel. He talks about restoring his people, y'all. And it's going to overflow on the whole world. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And our restoring, like Paul said, is going to be a blessing to the world, man. And it's going to be something that's going to be so amazing. And I prophesied last time that we're going to be a part of it. Who we're going to be a part of it. We think that it's going to just fall upon our children, but I declare and decree today that we're going to be a part of this thing, man. We're going to see this thing happen, man. You know, we're going to be able to look back and share when it first began. I was a part of the first fruits. I was a part of the beginning of this thing. You know what I'm saying? I was reading about the Azusa Street revival, you know, with William Seymour, and they don't like to mention him, you know what I'm saying? They like to give the props to, to you know what I'm talking about, the mother people, you know what I'm saying? But a major black man, who in California, Azusa Street, bringing forth revival, and it all started through prayer, y'all. It all started them in a little house coming together, corporate prayer, and calling on the most high God. Revival broke out, y'all. Who service didn't end. <laughs> it started from the morning to the night. Y'all, they, they wasn't going home. Some of them, they were sleeping in church, man. That's how that revival was fire, man. And I'm looking forward to it again in a New Testament time, in a New Testament age. You know what I'm saying? Who for the Hebrews, for the Hebrews. And we just dove into prayer, y'all, based upon the priest being one who stands in the gap for the people. The prophet speaks to the people on the behalf of God, but the priest speak to God on the behalf of the people. And we went in, man, into this um, series just going deep about um, prayer, this weapon called prayer. And we done made it all the way down to our last point, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And, um... I probably might not wrap it up today, but the next time we're going to wrap it up and then we're going to get back into this book, Joel. That's why I'm bringing it to you, not to lose where we was and where we going. You know what I'm saying? By the grace of the most high. But we had to go into this prayer because that's where the power at. That's where the strength at. And we don't want to just build a fluff church, yo. Who? Because people come and go. We don't want to just build a fluff church. We don't want to be a church that just boom, you know what I'm saying? Because you got church, you know what I'm saying? It boom, but it's weak. It's no strength. It's no structure. And the people can't survive. The people dwindle away. But we don't want that to be said about this church. Anybody plug into this church, we want to feed you and give you all three of the pillars of the church. We want you to have the word. You know what I'm saying? We want you to have Cornelia, fellowship. Who? Fellowship. But we also want you to have this pillar 
called prayer. And that's the three major pillars of the church. And that's what we want to implement in this church. And we're going to implement some things and do a lot of fellowship, man. Me and my wife got some things even to get with Ebony with the worship team. You know what I'm saying? And, and do some worship nights, man. We got some things planned. You know what I'm saying? And it's just the beginning, man. The Bible, what, what, what's the saying? What the scripture say? Despise not meager beginnings. Who? Despise not meager beginnings. It's like a snowball effect. Once this thing get going, ain't no devil in hell going to be able to stop it, saints. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? God is good, man. And I'll be excited about those things. But this last point, this third point, we're talking about the different elements of prayer. The different elements of prayer. And you need to know that prayer is not just one thing, but it's different elements. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's small prayers, beginner prayers, but then it keep going up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How you doing, sis? It keep going up. It's a constant growth. It's a constant God calling you up a level. You know what I'm saying? It's a constant getting closer and closer to him. And it's a beautiful thing, man. It never stops. And that's how God rules. That's how he get down. That's how he rock. He always calling us closer. Always calling us closer. And we want to be close to him like Adam was. Walked in the cool of the day with him, y'all. <laughs> sweet, sweet fellowship, I call it. Communication like no other. And we looked at the scripture. I'm going to read it. In 1 Timothy 2.1, the Bible said, therefore, therefore, I exalt first of all that supplications, prayers, intercession, giving of thanks be made for all men. And in that text, y'all, we could see the different elements of prayer. He talks about supplication. He talks about prayers. And that's the one we're going to get into today. And hopefully we could get to, to intercession. We already covered um, supplications last time. If you missed that, this is going to be coming out um, on the, um, the videos in a, in, a, in a few. But that's the elements of it, y'all. And when you learn these different elements, it takes your life to another level. Because you're not just going to God just with a, with a lay me down to sleep. You're not just going to God with, 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 with God, you know what I'm saying, and then you out of there. Nah, nah. You got your whole strategy when you go before your king. <laughs> you understand the different elements of prayer. You know how to enter into prayer. Oh, God, because when we're going to get to this Thanksgiving, we start with Thanksgiving and we end with Thanksgiving. We also going to get into this spiritual weapon. Who does this, who this, this prayer of the spirit, Paul, see? And we're going to cut it straight. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be for next week. But you need to know these things. If you ain't need to know these things, I wouldn't be bringing you these things. Who, if these things ain't never blessed my life, I wouldn't be bringing you these things, man. You know what I'm saying? Nah, it's like a, it's like a basketball player. It's like a coach. He going to give his players every single thing they need to succeed. Who, every single thing they need to succeed, you know, for the glory of the most high, for the win of the team, man. Because if you ain't know by now, Christianity... Oh, the fate is a team sport. <laughs> it's a team sport. You know what I'm saying? And, and the stronger the team to be is for the, the stronger the individuals are. That's the stronger the team going to be. The stronger the individuals are, that's the stronger the team going to be, y'all. You know what I'm saying? You want to have a weak team? Have weak individuals, man. It ain't no one man show, man. You know what I'm saying? Jordan needed help, y'all. <laughs> Jordan needed help on Mr. Franklin. He couldn't get it by himself, man. He was failing miserably, you know. So we've been going deep into this, man, and we looked at supplication. We broke down what is the elements of prayer, you know what I'm saying? And we looked at the definition of the word element. 
how it means a part of something or an aspect of something that's abstract, that's abstract. Meaning a certain particular part of something that we can't see and we can't touch, yo. But it's very, very important. It's very, very necessary we talked about. You know what I'm saying? On one end is abstract. You can't see it and you can't touch it. How you doing, young man? But on the other end, you know what I'm saying? On the aspect of it, y'all, it's essential. It's something that's very, very important. And that's what we went into, just breaking down the element. And then we got to our first um, element, we dealt with supplication. And we just went in, we read the scripture in Philippians, Philippians 4, 6, and I'm going to read it, sound boot. You could pull it up. The Bible said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer. And that's what we're going to deal with. But it makes a separation. It says, and supplications. Who? So we dealt with supplications, y'all. And supplications. And that's what we dealt with in the word supplication. It meant y'all to ask something humbly or to make a humble request or to make a humble request. If you remember, we went in about this supplication. We correlated it to the tax collector who came to God humbly. Didn't even lift up his head to heaven, y'all. And if you want something from God, you're going to have to come humbly, man. You're dealing with the king of kings and the Lord of lords. You see, you will humble yourself to come talk to a president, but you're dealing with somebody that's way greater than any president, any man, any earthly king, y'all. You're dealing with the one who created it all. Who created you? The one who has your heart in his hand, has your children's heart in his hand. You don't wake yourself up in the morning. It's him that allows you to wake up. And that's the one you're going to. So how much more you come to him humbly? Who like the tax collector? We none perfect. What's up, Travis, my brother? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? By the grace of God, y'all. And that's what it is, man. And we talked about that, coming to God humbly. But then we went deeper and we said that supplication, it also could be translated into a word called petitions. Petitions. And we went deep about that. You need to know about that. That is not just a supplication. It's not just something you come humbly asking God, but it also could be translated into a petition. And that's a legal term. Who God, that's a legal term we talked about. You Don't you know you got legal rights with God? Who, for some things on the earth? Some things that you need access to? Some things that you need granted in your life? You got, you got petitions lined up for you, man. That's the type of God we serve. He's a judge. And shouldn't a judge of all the earth do right, y'all? <laughs> you're not dealing with an unjust judge. No, you're dealing with a judge that does everything right in decency and order. And he done set some things for you. He done set some things for you. He done put some things in his constitution, in his law book, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because we talked about how it's, a, it's a, a term of law that lawyers use to bring in the courtroom and to make a petition for the things that they claim you need. Not based upon hearsay, not based upon what the lawyer wants done for his client, not based upon what the, what the client wants, no, based upon what's in the law. Who would the client is deserving of? I know we don't deserve a lot of things. We nothing but sinners. Come on, man. Let's keep it real. We know um, anthropology. We know the real deal. We not a st we done study some things, you know. We know that 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 we deprave in certain areas, but you so important to God. God gave you things that that He 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 felt that you deserve. <laughs> And the shocking thing is, Mr. Franklin, is some of those things is even for unbelievers. That's how just your God is. That's how just your God is. That he done put some things in there, Dr. Terry, that's mandated, that's, that's, a, that's a part of a petition, a part of the law for all mankind to receive from him. 
to receive from him. And if he got some of those things for unbelievers that's not his, how much more things he got for you? Who? How much petitions he have for you? What you lacking in your life? What you lacking? What you need done? Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And I talked about this. I forgot it again. But there's a book. You got to get you one. Even going on. Look at the promises of God. For all of his promises are yes and amen, y'all. It's yes and amen. He can't lie. He can't lie no matter how the situation look. No matter how hard it get. You know what I'm saying? If you stand upon those promises, these things going to be fulfilled in your life, y'all. He's faithful. Even when we unfaithful, the Bible say, he's faithful still. That's just the type of guy he is. And you need to know that. You need to know that. He done promise you some things for your life as singles. You're looking for that wife. He done promise you some things in the marriage. You want that husband to get right and change and be on one accord with you. You know what I'm saying? You're looking for some things. Oh, God, you want that boyfriend to change so you could get married and do it right. You know what I'm saying? You want that window of opportunity to come to you because we all need grace to bubble. Oh, God, let me say that again. That's, that's a Louisiana term. We all need grace to bubble in life, to ball. Oh, God, that's some old term. You know what I'm saying? What's some young ones, son? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To drip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Who want to drip in you, man? You know, not just with clothes, but in your finances. Rod and fly. Yeah, God approve of these things. Yeah, God approve of these things. Especially when he give it to you. Oh, God. You know what I'm saying? Not when you go and try to get it on your own to stunt. No. We don't want to be baby. We don't want to be stunners. You know, I'm from Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? Nah. We want to be looking like the most high who shines every day. Every day. If I have time when we done, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to show you how he, he commanded in his law for the priests to shine, Kurt. Who he wanted them laced with gold, Kurt. <laughs> you see, we don't understand why we got that, uh, fashion, uh, that, that, that fixated with gold, man. A brother asked me the other day, he said, man, how you keep your goals up? And that's something I've been had years ago. You know what I'm saying? When I was out there living wrong. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but God is not only to redeem, redeem your soul, he redeem all of you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He redeem all of you, man. You know what I'm saying? But, man, God commanded that. And it blew me away. He commanded that his priests be laced with gold, y'all. He even blessed some of his, his people, the Israelites in the Old Testament, with earrings. Oh, God, you don't know where that come from, though. You don't know where that come from. Let me call you to go deep into the Bible. Find out, find out about these things. The Bible said it was God who blesses people with gold earrings, Miss Chandra. <laughs> you don't know where that come from. You think that come from you. You think that come from some type of culture. Nah. That come from the Bible, man. God been doing things like that. Things we want, things we need, things we desire. He done gave you that. But he wants you to come to him to get it. He wants you to, to bring your desire and submit it to his. Because like we said last time, his desires is always greater than ours. He always want to bless us more than we want to be blessed. <laughs> He always want to bless us more than we want to be blessed. I be sitting on and thinking about the things that I want to do and want to, you know what I'm saying? And God like, that's too small. That's too small. I'm like, what? That's too small. You serve a big God, man. You serve a big God. He done showed me some houses, Mr. Frank. I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's how he rolled, that's how he rocked, y'all. 
We got to get to know him. We got to understand him. And I'm, I'm, who y'all pulling some stuff out of me, but I'm trying to get you the game on how to get it, man. How to get it. And that's what I tell my homeboys who, who, who I rock with and talk to in the streets. Because I'm like, if I didn't give you game, you know what I'm saying? Showed you how to cook and do things that was evil. Why I'm not going to give you the game and show you how to cook for the Lord and do things that's Ooh, righteous, not evil, but righteous. It would be wrong for me not to tell you that. When I done told you all around, when I done led you astray, when you didn't watch me, I done showed you things. Who that's not going to bring you in heaven, but bring you in hell, man. So I stand before you and I tell them that. We be running it and I talk to them. I said, so it's a must that I give you this real game, man. It's a must that I give you with thus said the Lord. It's a must. Who God condemn my soul if I don't, God? Because you done took me out of that Mary Clay. You done pulled me, snatched me out of Satan's grip. It would be a shame for me not to try to do the same. <laughs> it would be a shame, y'all. You know what God done did for you. So you got, you got a, a, a job to do. God wants you to get in his word and grab these gems. Not to keep them for yourself, but to get these gems and bring them back to the hood. <laughs> get these gems, bring them back to your home, God. Let me show you how to do this, man. Nah, you got to pray for this like this. Look, let me, you know what I'm saying? And when it worked, she coming back, man. She coming back, but we don't know how to do it. We don't understand why God want us to learn these principles. To bring them back, y'all, to where we came from. To bring them back to where we came from. Us, ain't? Is that not the man at the tomb that he saved and healed? Who wanted to roll with him? He said, nah, stay home. Go and tell you the whole city, man. Go and tell the whole city, Nick. But a lot of people running, go and tell things, and they ain't even got the game. They bring in what they heard and not what they experienced. They bring in what they saw and not what they took the time and tried to do and trust God. Let that not be us, man. We bring to our children what we done did. They watch us do it. Ooh, they watch us do it. They watch us cry to the most high. They watch us pray. They watch us connect our prayers with the way we live because you can't pray one way and live another. Now we go get, you know what I'm saying? We can't do that. Nah, the way you pray, you got to work to, 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 to be in agreement with God. To bring it to pass, Travis. Faith without works is dead. God always checks our work, man. You know what I'm saying? We can't be praying one way but living another. We can't be praying one way but doing something else. It got to line up. And we're going to watch this thing come to pass, man. God is good. And that's why we're going to fellowship with this corner near you because you got brothers and sisters on the side of you that's a little further than you that could give you the game in certain areas. But you also could give them in other areas. That's how the kingdom work, y'all. That's how it work. You know, so we went deep into supplications on how it's also a petition, y'all. A petition. Y'all pulling it out of me, man. Y'all pulling it out of me. And we seen that through the, the um, concordians, the Hebrew concordians, you know. About the word kahan, kahan, <laughs> a hard word to say, y'all. And uh, it talks about, about supplications being petition, a petition. But not only a petition, but grace and mercy, y'all. Grace and mercy. You know what I'm saying? And that's what the Bible tells us in Hebrews 4, 16. I don't know if I gave it to you, sound booth. There's going to be a lot of scriptures we're going to go through. I need you to write them thing now. Because I want you to go and implement them things. 
or take mental notes, you know what I'm saying? Pull out your phone because you're going to take these scriptures and bring these things in your closet with you. You're going to have something to stand on when you go to God. You're not going to be just, just, just winging it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're not going to just be, be swinging, Mr. Franklin. No, you're going to have something. Okay, God, this is what you say. I'm trying to do it your way, Miss Candace. You know what I'm saying? That's what God talk about. I'm trying to do it your way. You're telling that to God. You know what I'm saying? He said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. And when you understand there's a petition, you could come boldly because you didn't find some promises in the Bible. Oh, God, and you know that you have petitions. Who? So you're bringing it to God, coming boldly to the throne of grace. Not no judge throne, not no, 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 no throne with the, with the thing on Mr. Franklin like the man had to, had to deal in the book of Joshua with the judge, the unjust judge. Trying to, trying, to, trying to deal with him in a certain way and fashion. But now we're dealing with a just God. Man. He said that you may obtain, obtain mercy and find grace in your time of need. Time of need. So let's deal with this sucking one by the grace of God. And hopefully we could get to the third one. If not, you know what I'm saying? We're going to conclude it not next week, but the week after. And then we're going to get into some fresh manner by the grace of God. <laughs> yes, Lord, I love his word, yo. I love his word. It then did miracles in my life. You know what I'm saying? I have in my nose. Now, let's look at our next element of prayer, yo, which we see within our scripture by a phrase called prayers. 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 Pull it up, sound boot. And I'm going to just read it. Going back to 1 Timothy, we taking these things straight from our scripture, y'all. We giving you scripture, we giving you Bible. Therefore, I exalt first of all, we went into that, of how it should be first in our life. He said that supplications, we talked about supplication. Then he said prayers. Mm. Then he said prayers. What is prayer? Everything we, when we talk to God, Dr. Terry is called prayers, huh? <laughs> but we see in the scripture that, that he says supplication, then he says prayers. What is that? What is that? He put a comma by it, by it to let you know that it's not the same, oh God. In the other scripture, he said and to let you know that it's not the same. Well, what is these prayers? I thought everything was prayers, Lord. I have in my notes, this element of prayer is for obtaining spiritual and temporal blessings. <laughs> it's for obtaining spiritual and temporal blessings. And these are things that you need. You see, you don't need just, just, just the spiritual things, but you also need the temporal things. What are the temporal things, things you could feel, see, and touch, objects that you obtain on earth? But you need not just the temporal things, but you also need the spiritual things. You need them both. It's a picture of worshiping God in spirit and in truth together. <laughs> because when you have both in your life, you have a fulfilled witness before the people. You know what I'm saying? You could witness to the people not in the spirit, not just in the spiritual things of God, but you could also witness to people in the natural things of God. You're blessed on both sides. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're blessed on both sides. And, and as I look at it and as I grow in the church, the spiritual side of you being blessed is going to bless a lot of people in the church. But the temporal things, and me and Kurt was talking about it one time. Sometimes we don't, we don't even want it. We don't even have a heart for it. You know what I'm saying? Because, because you know, we don't want to be covetedness. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to be prideful. We don't want to get caught up in the glitz and the glamour now. And that's rightfully so. That was my heart. That was my heart because I chased all of that so hard when I was in the world. And sometimes when you come to Christ, you think that you don't need these things. Or Now, God, like, no, I need you to chase these things as well. No, 
Why? To be a witness to the outsiders. You see, they can't understand spiritual things. Oh, God. So when God bless you with that thing, <laughs> and you're pointing it to him, and you're not faking it, but you're really living it, man, they're coming to God, man. They come to God, and if they don't come to God, they're going to look at your life and say, God, my little cousin, I ain't lying, dog. Bro, I'm proud of you. You know what I'm saying? Because they're looking at your life, and they know that it's God. They can't find no ill living in you. You're not faking this thing. They look at you and say, man, that ball, I know that ball, man. I know that girl. She was really out there. You know what I'm saying? She was really doing her thing. She wasn't trying to serve God. But when, she, but when they see you blessed and highly favored with the material things that they're chasing. Whoo, and then they look at your life and see you're really chasing after God. Those things not doing, that, that, that don't mean nothing to you. Your heart is gripped towards God. You really love God. You know the witness that speaks? Man, that speaks witness. Because they see your life doing this. And back in their mind, they're fighting. And that's where you can intercede from. Oh, God. Because they're going to want to change. They're going to want to go in the direction you can't. You can't. You, you, you walking in. But sometimes it's hard. Because they got Satan gripping them. And their eyes are blind. But they want the things you got. And they want to live the way you're living. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of times they get caught up because you, you got Christians with the blessings, but they're living wrong. And it's a bad witness. They're abusing the blessings of God. Let that not be us, saints, in this new era. In this new lifting up, what God is bringing and raising up a new thing. Let that not be us. Now, nah, we want the blessing, God, and we're going to live right. We're going to give our children something to see. I took a picture with a young man, bro, over here. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, man, he said, I watch you um, on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And his mama doing the work, man. I salute her, man. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, he was like, he was like, man, you, you, you're like a fan to me. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I'm, I'm like a fan to you. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, we all fans of the most high. So don't, 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 fish, don't miss the, 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 the forest for the tree. Now, come on. Now. Let's keep it real. We give it all up to the most high. But another brother told me it spoke time because he said, bro, he said, most youngsters I know. They chasing after the rappers. They chasing after the, the drug dealers. They chasing after this and that, the entertainers. And that's they, they, they're a fan of them. Oh God. But if we do this thing right, we could have our children who being fans who of us as we point them to God as we point them to Christ y'all you know what I'm saying and say son that's who I want you to be a fan of who he bubbling he glistening he doing it right the righteous one you know what I'm saying and that's why we want to lead our children how you doing how you doing young lady <laughs> young man back there you know so it's a blessing he say suffer not the little children to come to me y'all we got to be examples for them. You know, we want to be influencers. We got to be an influence in them. Not to the wrong things, but to the right things. Not to Satan, but to Christ. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For his glory, man. And that's what I want to be in these times. I don't influence a lot to do wrong. Y'all, you, know, you got to understand that. So I'm ready, my brother, to influence a lot, a lot to do right. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So God, use me, God. In every area you, you want to, I submit my life unto you. That you might lead these brothers. That you might lead these young women. Who? To righteousness, man. To righteousness. 
And that's what we want, you know? So these spiritual and temporal blessings are what's up, man. <laughs> Let me talk to you, to your everyday common language. It's what's up, Travis. You know, and that's what you tell them. Huh, B? How we talk. <laughs> you know, I have in my notes and I have a caption of his spiritual blessings. And it's in the scripture. I got to give you the scripture to show you these things. God not playing on God is real. God going to put these things in his constitution for you. Not the constitution of the United States, but the constitution of heaven. You're a citizen of heaven, man. You live by his rules, by his laws, by his ways. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Not by the ways of this earth, man. Getting caught up following a bird <laughs> that's deep deceased and dead, man. How are we going to feed our children, either the left wing or the right wing? I heard a prophet ask me that. Because we caught up on politics. Let me bring it to you. Let me bring it to you. We caught up on that. A prophet brought it to me and told me that. He said, man, if you was hungry and you and your children were starving, he said, and all they had was a, a bird that was diseased. He said, what wing would you feed your children? <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to leave that like that. I'm going to leave that like that. A diseased bird with a cancer in it. What wing would you feed your children? The left or the right? The whole bird disease, no? <laughs> Which wing? But let's read it. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible says in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Not some, but every spiritual blessing. Every single one. He ain't blessed us with some, but every spiritual blessing. Not most of them, no, everyone. That's what the scripture says. John chapter 15, verse 7 through 8. Look what the scriptures tell us. Jesus speaking, the word of God, the red letter. Oh, God, let's get in touch. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask, you will pray, you will call on me. He said, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By my father, by this my father is glorified, that you may bear much fruit. That fruit is spiritual blessings, man. Not just natural things we need, Mr. Franklin, but spiritual blessings. You know what I'm saying? Fruits. The Bible said, that's what Jesus said. He said, you're going to know them by their fruits. Not by their words. Not by what you see on the outside. Nah, by their spiritual fruits. And we just read how he, he ready to give you all spiritual blessings. That you might bear what? Much fruit. Much spiritual fruit, saints. You know what I'm saying? So you will be my disciples. That you will be his disciples. And the disciple is deep. Ooh, y'all pulling stuff out of me. You know what I'm saying? I preached one time just going deep about um, a disciple, man. And our disciple um, ship classes back in the home church. You know what I'm saying? And we're going, man, I, I, man, I want to do so much, man, to bless the people of God over here. You know what I'm saying? And um, we're going to take our time, though. But a disciple, man, is to... To follow Jesus in a way that's so close to where you could feel the dust of his sandals. You see, theologians say that if you're following too far back, if you can't feel the dust of Jesus' sandals hitting you, you're too far back. But you don't, he don't want you to follow him too fast to where you're, you're going ahead of him. Oh, God. You're running over him. You're going ahead of him. 
He said, now nah, a disciple is to follow right behind him. Right behind him, foot in step. Foot in step, not looking to the side or to the right. Foot in step, right beside him, yo. Right in the back of him, I mean. Foot in step. You know what I'm saying? When he stop, you stop. When he go, Mr. Franklin, you go. That's a disciple. Where he sleep, you sleep. Where he live, you live. You consume with him. And he can't do nothing but pour out of you. That's what he calling us to, Travis. You know what I'm saying? The one who's living on the inside of you. He got work for us, y'all. But not only spiritual blessings, but temporal blessings. Let's get into it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. The Bible say, And my God shall supply all your needs. Not some, but all. Not some, but all. All your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, the Messiah. He's going to supply all your needs. This is talking about physical needs, temporal needs. What do you need? We're talking about in the natural. We're talking about the house. We're talking about the car. We're talking about the clothes. What you need? That's why he said, don't worry about these things now. Nah, come ask me about these things. Oh, God. Don't try to obtain all these things on your own. Now, I want to bless you with these things. That's one of the things God told me, and I had a problem with that because I'm a go-getter. I always want to go get it on my own. He said, son, I want to bless you. He said, expect all your blessings from me. Who? And that's not easy because you got to come to him and ask him. <laughs> but when you got that perspective, he keep you humble. He keep you close to him. You're in his presence. In the presence of the Lord is what? The fullness of joy. So by you coming to him, depending upon him, he stay giving you every, all, all kind of other things you need. Plus the thing you ask for. So you're getting a double portion. You know what I'm saying? You're getting a double portion. Who are you asking for your blessings tonight, man? Who are you trying to get that whip from? A man? Who are you trying to get that whip from tonight? Let me talk to you. Come on. Who are you trying to get it from? A man? Let Jesus be that man. Let Jesus be that man. How are you trying to get it? Through drugs? Nah, let Jesus give it to you. How you trying to get it? <laughs> Come on. Because he could give it better than any one of them, them, them situations, y'all. And when he give it, it make it rich. And it add no sorrow. These other things come with sorrow. Because the way you get it is the way you got to keep it. Oh, God. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We want it with no strings attached. Come to the Father. He's ready to give it. He's ready to give it, man. And he's proven that in my life. That he blessed more than the devil could ever bless, y'all. That's the type of God we serve. Not only temple um, in Philippians, but in Psalms. Psalms chapter 67, verse 6 through 7. Verse 6 through 7. Let's look at it. The Bible said, Then the earth shall yield her increase. Oh, God. The earth going to yield her increase to you. You know what I'm saying? God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. When he bless us, the earth going to fear him. Man, we just giving you these foundational scriptures, y'all, and concluding it just to let you know that that's what he want. That's his heart. In 2 Peter 1, 3, look what he says. As his the divine power has given to us all things 
pertaining to life and godliness. Pertaining to the temporal things that you need in life, but also the godly things, the spiritual things that you need in life. He's given them to us, y'all, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue through his word. Through the knowledge of him. The knowledge of who? Of Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the word. The word that became flesh in John. Come on. Come on. You know what I'm saying? This is awesome, saints. This is the place in our prayer. We're just going through it. We're just going through it. You know what I'm saying? I see you. You know? This is the place in our prayer I have in my notes where we pray intimate prayers of fellowship with God and where we ask God to grow us closer unto him, y'all. You know what I'm saying? In the things of God. Not only closer to him, but also in the things of God. The spiritual things, y'all. To grow us more in the things of God spiritually. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we see this in the Psalms, man. And I ain't get a chance to, to write the scripture down. But you know how the, the, um, the Psalms when prayed David. David says, search me, O Lord, and see if there be any unclean thing in me. Praying unto God to, to, to draw closer to God. You know? And the way we do that is to ask him to purge us and cleanse us. That we might be able to stand up right before him. You know what I'm saying? But not only that, this is where we ask God to use us, y'all. Not only use us, this is where we ask God for his power to be seen in our lives for his glory. This is the type of prayers I have in my note that we pray, that, 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 that been prayed Ooh, it, within the book of Psalms. In um, Psalm 68, 28, and I'm going to just flow through it for the sake of time. He said, summon your power. This is the old saints. Look how they pray to God. Look how they pray to God. They say, God, summon your power. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is, the, this is the type of prayer that you ask God. You in there with God. You, you in your closet. I got to be practical, man. I'm trying not to, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to flow with it. But you in there with God. And you're not just trying to hurry up and run out of that now because you need something. you like, God, I need your power. Whoo! I don't need it tomorrow. I need it now. I'm summoning your power. Who Send it down now, God, while I'm in this closet. Who? Why nobody can see me, God? You say when I pray, tell you in secret places, you're going to reward me openly, God. Send down your power. Who? That's what we call upon the power. Jesus was praying in secret for power. And then you would see it when he walked out among the people. Are you asking him for power in your prayers? Are you asking him to fill you with power for his glory? That's why you ask him for that. For He summoned his power. God, show us your strength, our God, as you have done before. This is not something that God never done before. He been pouring out his power upon men, upon women. Why not you? He want to pour it out on you. You know what I'm saying? Why not you? He did it to the men in the Bible. He did it to the women in the Bible. Why not you on earth today? Oh, God. You know what I'm saying? God is still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changed it not. Why not you? You know, ask him for it. Psalm 68, 34, and 35. Proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the heavens. You, God, are awesome in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. He gives power and strength to his people, Mr. Franklin. You know what I'm saying? And within these New Testament times, we know about it. You know what I'm saying? How the people of God gathered in the upper room in prayer in order to be endued with his power, y'all. And we see this in Luke chapter 24 and 49. You know what I'm saying? He promised to send his power. 
He said, Behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you that but tarry in the city. Wait for it in Jerusalem. He said, Until you are endued with power from on high. Also in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, man. You know what I'm saying? They cried out in his New Testament times for his power, yo, to be used by him. He said, you're going to be witnesses unto me, Nick, to Samaria, to Jerusalem, to Judah, and to all the other parts of the earth, to the end of the earth. You can't do that without his power. I'm sorry to tell you, you can't do it without his power. You know what I'm saying? So we need you to ask for it. Oh, God. We need you to ask for it. And the way you do that is through prayer, y'all. You know what I'm saying? That's what prayer says. You know what I'm saying? Let me keep going, man, and we're going to conclude. I got a few more scriptures. This is where we ask God to help us with our flaws. Not with sin. Not with sin, but with your flaws. With your mistakes. With your shortcomings. You're asking for help in that area to keep us from walking in the way to, that, that tries to keep us from walking in the way of the spirit. That we might not fulfill the ways of the flesh. Because we know that when lust is fulfilled, you know what I'm saying? It brings forth sin. You know what I'm saying? And it starts in our flaws. It starts in our shortcomings. It starts in us not being perfect, Nick. But if you ask him, if you ask him to keep you, <laughs> you know, this is where we ask God to show us things, great and mighty things, yo. Past, present, and future I have in my notes. Things concerning you, your family, your church, our people, the body of Christ as a whole, also the things in the world. This is where you ask God for these things, yeah, yo. He's going to give you revelation. You got to know things about what's going on in the world, things about your children, things about your life. This is where you ask these things. These things don't just drop out of the sky. No, you have to ask God for these things. And he want to give them to you. You just got to ask him. But we don't ask him because we don't really know. We don't really know. We don't, nobody really broke that down for us like that. But this is where you ask him in the scripture that I could give you to show you that in Jeremiah 33, 3, in the NLT, ask me, he said. Ask me in the NLT, ask me, pray to me, call upon me. Look what he said. And I will tell you remarkable secrets that you do not know about things to come. Let's read it in the, um, the New King James Version. He said, call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Which you do not know. You know what I'm saying? And going deeper, man, these are prayers. Not only where we pray, but where we listen to God. And we're going to conclude with that, where we listen to God. I just came with a message that we hear in Rome. Go back and look at that exposure. <laughs> and that's what's taking place in the earth right now. Like Bob Marley said about war, Mr. Franklin, he said war, war, everywhere is war. Where 2024, we could say exposure, exposure. Everywhere is exposure. You know what I'm saying? And it's in these times that God wants us to hear right. We hearing wrong. He said, take heed how you hear. That's what he said in the text. We always concerned about the speaker and how the words coming out. If they saying it right. <laughs> but God said, I put all the accountability upon them that's listening. Oh, God. We don't do that in the world. We put the accountability on the one that's speaking. And it should be because we got to speak the right way. We don't want to just speak to people any kind of way. But God sitting down from his high mountain, Jesus, he said, take heed how you hear. He said, I'm going to put the accountability upon you, even in your relationships. Take heed how you hear, man. Because if you could hear 
right. You could hear what they not saying. <laughs> you could hear what they trying to say. And you could help them out a little bit, Nick. You could cease the arguments a little bit. Is that not what the scripture said? He said, he said be, be slow to speak, but quick to do what? To hear. You know what I'm saying? So Eli, man, and I ain't got the, the scripture, but you know it. You could go and check it out. The young prophet, Samuel, you know what I'm saying, was in the house of Eli. And he was hearing the Lord speak. And Eli, understanding that God trying to speak to this young man, trying to speak to this young man while he lay on his bed, he hear a voice calling him. God calling him to prayer. <laughs> God calling him to get out of bed. Have you ever felt an unction at five in the morning to get out your bed? Oh, God, three in the morning. Come on, Dr. Terry. I done had the unctions. And now we got a choice to make. Will I be obedient? Ooh, and get out of the bed and go in that closet and begin to pray and begin to worship? Come on now. And begin to listen. And that's what Eli told the servant to do. He said, tell him, speak, Lord. Your servant listening. I'm attentive, Daddy. I'm listening, Abba. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to teach you all these things that I'm learning to my children. They're going to watch me do these things. You know what I'm saying? In order for us to go to another level. Commentators say that this is the point in our prayers where we trying to procure good in our life. You see, the supplications was all about trying to prevent evil. Any lack in our life I talked about, we went deep about that. Because sometimes we could be satisfied with lack in our lives. But lack is evil to God. <laughs> It's evil to God. There's no lack in heaven, y'all. And we know this. Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. Going back to Genesis. Let me bring it to you. Even going back to Genesis. He put two trees in the garden with all kind of other trees. And he said, these are fruit for you to eat. But only don't eat from one. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But God never told him not to eat from the tree of life. <laughs> he revealed his intent, y'all. He always wanted us to only experience life. And life more abundantly. Who? He said, I don't need you to have knowledge. Because when you have knowledge, it comes with understanding evil. Come on, man. Oh, God. All I want you to have is life and life more abundantly. That's all I want for your children, life. That's all I want for you, life. That's all I want for you is life. Oh, God. And what he going to give us in the end when we receive him? Eternal life. Oh, eternal life. That's what he's calling us to, saints. You see, your God died for you, man. He sent his only begotten son to die for your sins, to die for my sins. And whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Going back to life. Going back to life. He's saying all you got to do is call upon me. All you got to do is pray, going back to prayer. He said, you have not because you ask not. He said, all that calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Will be saved. So that's what we're going to do tonight, saints. We're going to call upon the name of the Lord. We're going to call upon the name of the Lord. And if you need prayer, the, 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 the altar is open. You know what I'm saying? 
I don't know if they back there. You want to go get them, Nick? We're going to play a little song, y'all, and we're going to break camp and get out of here. You know what I'm saying? But your God, who? Your God, your God <laughs> is waiting to hear from you. He waiting to hear from you and you alone. It's only your words that's going to move God. It's only your showing forth yourself going to move God. It's only you, who God, acknowledging him. He said, if you acknowledge me before men, I'm going to acknowledge you before my father. So we got a little time. We're going to open up the altar, man. As Ebony give us a little fruitful song. Y'all come to the altar. If you done heard the most high. We're going to pray. And deputize you. That you be filled with his spirit. Who Don't be ashamed. Come and pray with your God. Who Come and pray with your God. Come and pray with your God. He got work for you. He ready to answer you. He loved you more than you ever think or could ever imagine. He got a plan and a purpose for you. He knew you before the foundations of the world. He knew you before you was in your mother's womb and he called you and ordained you. A prophetess, a prophet, a priest. Yes, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. We praise you forever. We'll praise you forever. We'll praise you. Forever, Lord, we'll praise yes, you. Lord. Forever, yes, Lord, we'll praise you. See you see us, Daddy. Forever, you see us, Daddy. We'll praise you. See you see us, Daddy. Forever, you see us, Lord. You hear us, Lord. You hear us, Lord. We'll praise Woo. you. Forever, forever, God. We'll praise forever, you. God. Forever, God. Forever, God. We'll pray forever, you God. Forever, forever, God. Lord, Lord. we Lord. give glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Forever. Glory to God. Come on, sir.
Hallelujah. Awesome. Ah, 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 ah. We give glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. thank you God for your presence tonight we thank you for your favor tonight God we thank you God for your presence God you done look and smiled upon us tonight God from the word to the worship to the keys God to the piano God to the Father Lord guitar Father Lord to the drums God you done smiled upon us tonight God so, Father, we ask you to break every stronghold. We ask you to loose us, God. We ask you to make us kings in the spirit. We ask you to make us queens in the spirit, God. We ask you, God, to give us every single spiritual blessing, every temple blessing that we need, God, that we might be a light among lights, that we might be for the Lord. Who a blessing before your people, God. That they look up at us, God, and want you so bad, God. So bad when they see our houses. So bad when they see our cars. So bad when they see our schooling. So bad when they see our children, God. So bad, God. So bad when they see our real estate portfolio, God. So bad for the Lord when they see, God, our ooh, temporal blessings. But even more better when they see we living right before you. When they see, God, we walking according to your scriptures, God. That you didn't bless us with an overflow of spiritual blessings, God. Let it be for tonight for your people, God. You decided to come in here. You decided to smile upon us. You decided to, to bless us with your presence. So leave a blessing behind you, God. Bless your people on an amazing level. Let them never forget this night, God. Let it transfer to their vehicles. Let it transfer through the streets. Let it transfer through the neighborhood. Let it transfer, God, to the city through Dallas, God. Begin to shout what's going on, Father in Plano. Begin to shout from the rooftop. Begin to shout from the mountaintop. Begin to shout from the ground up, God. Do it for your glory, Master. Do it for your glory, God. We promise to be faithful unto you, God. For we know you're going to keep us in this hour, God. We put you first, Daddy. Bless your people, God. In a way like never before. Repeat after me, saints. Say, Father, we thank you for your, your, your son. We thank you for his death. We thank you for his burial. We thank you for his resurrection. We believe in all that he did for us. Fill us up with your spirit. Save us. Make us new. Make us right. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We receive it from on high. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Yahshua name. In Yahshua name. In Yahshua name. Amen, amen, and amen, saint. Oh, God. Give him some glory. Give him some glory. Give him some glory. Some things to move. 
to raise the roof tonight. I promise you. I promise you. Your God then came and see about us, yo. Woo! Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord bless you with your long peace. Be blessed, Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for breakthrough, God. Oh, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.